Recording in progress. Okay, uh, so we'll start uh, the next section of our lesson, which is uh, linear transforms.
So we had to go through three sections, three more sections. Uh, we went through four sections uh, earlier. Uh, first one is matrices. Second was determinants. Third one, uh, linear equations. Fourth one, vector spaces. So fifth, sixth, and seventh are the most important ones. Uh, fifth uh, chapter is on linear transforms. Fifth one, sixth, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Seventh, quadratic forms. Okay, right. So we'll see the fifth one. Let me pull this down a little bit so that everybody can see it. Uh, in engineering, I mean, uh, if you go through engineering applications, you can always find linear transforms. Hmm? There are some nonlinear transforms as well, but mostly you deal with linear transforms. Okay. Uh, first, let's take the linear transformations that we are familiar with. Right? The linear transformations that we are familiar with. Examples. Just for the motivation. Hmm? Let's consider some linear transforms uh, that we are familiar with. We have been dealing with a lot of linear transforms in our variables. First one. Say, for example, uh, if I have something like this. We are A and B are constants. You know how to differentiate this. How would you differentiate this? You can take one at a time, right? And at the same time, you can pull out the constant. You can do it like this, right? You know it. You take one at a time, and if you have a constant in it, you pull it out. Again, if you have something like this, this example one, Two. You know, you can you take one at a time. I mean, there are uh, transforms like this, and you are you are familiar with these things, right? There's one more. There's one more. How do do this one? Again, you can take one at a time. When you have a constant, you can pull it out. And you know, uh, if you take uh, this one further, Consider this uh, derivative operator. Right? If you take the derivative operator, in fact, you have these two properties. If you have, uh, uh, have two functions, I write like, like this, a times f, you can simply pull out a and then differentiate f and multiply that result with a. Can make a calculator, make a vertical. And there's another. If you have a sum in it, you can take one at a time. When we combine these two, you can write like this. When we combine similar uh, two similar uh, statements for the integration, you can write like this. This is, a, this is a, uh, I mean, you combine the two basic properties together. Now, why do you call them as linear? Right? This is just the motivation. Huh? Let's consider linear expressions. 
Still, I'm not, uh, I mean, these are some examples. You know, these three operators behave in the same fashion. But if you consider this one, you get this because you combine these two together. For the uh, integration and for the sigma, you have the same two properties. Right? Now, if you take linear expression, what is linear expression? How do you combine uh, x and y to get a linear expression? You use the very basic uh, knowledge, sorry, very basic mathematical operations that you learn in your grade one. What are those? Multiplication, I mean, scalar multiplication, multiplication by a number. I mean, we learn those things in grade one. Possibly we can extend this to uh, now grade three for you guys. So, grade one, two, and three. The very basic mathematical operations you have encountered were addition and scalar multiplication. So you add them, and it is at the same time, you can multiply these by some constants. So you get this using addition, scalar multiplication together. Addition and you multiply by a constant. Then you get, an, get a linear expression. Right? So linear transform is very similar to this one. Linear transform is, right, forget about these things now. Linear transform is something which preserves under very basic, I mean, these two operations, addition and scalar multiplication. So linear transformation is, is a basic idea. Linear transformation is a transformation, but this is not the defi formal definition. No? This is a crude definition. A transform is a transform which preserves or which go hand in hand, whatever. You can aulak ne make it. Addition and scalar multiplication. Multiplication, multiplication by a number, right? Multiplication by a number. Scalar multiplication is that. So, what do you mean by that? Okay, we'll go for the next paper. If you want, you can take this down. Uh, if you need to do something like that, you take. You can take it down. No, you you can later. Now, since we record this, you can copy it down later, right? That's also possible. Uh, anyway, I'll give you just one minute. Then we can. This is a motivation, now. Huh? Now I could have done it in the reverse way as well. I mean, I, what I want to say is that there are three operations which behave in the same fashion. But if you take just one of them, you know, it, this is just the combination of these two. Look, what is this now? This is the scalar multiplication. This is the addition. So, in fact, on the other hand, if you go back to linear expression, this is how you form a linear expression. So, if you linear expression expression is this, the linear transformation is a transformation or transform which preserves under these two operations. Because always in linear algebra we deal with these two operations. In linear transforms we deal with these two operations. Sorry, linear expression. When you form a linear expression, uh, you always deal with these two. When you come up with linear equations, again you form, I mean, you always deal with these two uh, operations. So likewise, when it comes to linear transforms, it is simply a transform which preserves under addition and scalar multiplication. Right? So let's come up with, uh, with the definition now. Hmm? Okay. Same idea, same thing. Right. No definition. The transform T or a transform T, whatever, is said to be linear. But if it preserves under addition and, so let's go for scalar multiplication. This is equal to what? 
look, if this is a transformation T, then you can pull out this A. And that's what we do with the derivative, right? Integration, everything. If you have a constant in, inside, you pull it out. Simple. What is the other thing? If you have two vectors, so two, sorry, this plus, there's no come, come on. Then if you have a sum, what, what would you do? In derivatives, what would you do? You take one at a time. So similarly, you take one at a time. So simple stuff, like error stuff. Like uh, geometrically, I can, uh, I can explain you what it is. Say, for example, you have a certain vector in R2, in R, this x. You multiply this by some constant. So this ax, sorry, other round of this vector. Now, say you apply transformation to this one. Then this says, Now, T, Tx is not the same. Tx would be something else now. This much. This Tx. This says that when you multiply this by A with the same constant, this A times Tx. Right? Here you have a vector. You multiply it by A. You get this one. Then you transform this uh, x to something else. This is, it, is, it is Tx. Its direction is different. It is uh, its uh, length is also different. Now you multiply it by the same way. Say a is four. There are they are different. Now you know that this is this point goes there under T. What about this point? This says that this point should also go to this point. That means what? Say you have x and ax. Now you map this point under t. It will go to this point. Now you multiply this by a. So make a If a is 4, a make a make a now, if you apply t to this vector, uh, it will like, go on top of this one. That means what? You apply the transformation and multiply. It's the same as multiply and apply the transform. That's what it says. Look, here you multiply first, then uh, you apply the transform. Here you apply the transform first, then multiply. That's what it says. It should preserve under scale multiplication, no matter how you do it. Right? Okay. So it doesn't matter. Hmm? Right. Uh, right. What, what about this one? Right. What about this one? This one says the following. Right? Take two vectors again. I am just trying to give you a I, I mean, I, you know, uh, this for only the first day, guys. Others also here. Uh, I told you that I, you better have a good uh, notion in this one. When you were in the first semester, probably in the orientation, but you didn't listen to that. You didn't come to the come to those lessons. Therefore, thereafter, I gave it up. Uh, now look, otherwise, uh, because you are you are always short sighted. I mean, uh, I shouldn't say this now, but that's the truth anyway. Short sighted means you. you I wanted to do that uh, at that point because everything would be. Uh, you can see that everything fall into the places, uh, all the pieces fall into the places uh, nicely if you had seen it earlier. 
but you didn't you were not ready to listen to that right uh, so that's why at the last our uh, last meet at the 11th hour we are going to do is do, do this now hmm? this did kind of pretty much useless because you know if you if you have seen this early it would have been much more better for you hmm? okay now it, anyway, it's over now so this is vector x this is vector y this is the sum now you do the same thing you apply uh to the transformation t to this one so x becomes something goes to somewhere here now this tx uh, then you apply this to y you get some vector like this now you add them up right it is a parallelogram law right so this tx plus ty what do we do, what do, we, do? we do now we uh, transform each vector then add them up now here we added them up here we do, we do the addition now now we are doing the addition first now you apply the transform uh, if it is linear it will go to this point straight away again what what does that mean that means e if you transform and add is the same as when you add and transform no matter what the order is you can apply the transformation first and then add or you can add them and then apply the transformation you would get the same vector that's what the linear means the uh, the linear transform uh lead the linear transform uh, preserves under addition and scalar multiplication in linear algebra always you talk about addition and linear transform linear uh, sorry addition and scalar multiplication here what the, what it what it says that uh, no matter what the order is you get the same ends here you know addition and you multiply uh, you apply the transform or you apply the transform and add you get the same point you know what i mean now how do i identify whether a transform is linear you don't have to worry about this definition i mean this definition now examples uh, say you have a transform i mean there are two ways of writing it i prefer columns column vectors sometimes uh, since they don't like to type them as columns uh, they like to type them as, as rows but both are correct right say you have something like this x1 x2 x3 say so you get something like this i will take some transforms like this some examples like this right now look uh, now uh, first let's let's consider the uh, domain uh, codomain and stuff like that now what about the the first transform the first one it is going from where to where i have to find a good blue pen I have used the blue blue ones earlier last year. I have run out of them. Hmm. So you know, uh, here you have a vector. What's the dimension of this vector? Give me the answer. What is the dimension of this vector? R three. Yes, R three. Here also target space is also R three. One, two, three, three pieces. So it's a 
Då sa det att jag dör och så det. Så blod finns nog. Det skriver jag alltså. Är det inte en i frukhallen? Nej. Det är någonting lyft i sinus. Okej, det är svårt. R3 to R3. Sorry about this one. No. Now the second one. There are two pieces here. So R2 to R2. This one. There are this is a three-dimensional vector. R3 to there are only two pieces here. R2. Now what I want to uh, Say is that which of them are linear? Without just by looking at this, you can simply identify the linear transform. It's a piece of cake. A grade uh, four, five student can do this. How do you figure out whether uh, these uh, transforms are linear? How do you find them? Out? Which one is linear? How do you find it? Okay, this is how you do it. If it is, remember, right? If it is linear, I mean, you can use this definition to prove it. But what the hell? You don't have to do it. This is how you do it. Hmm? This is how you do it. You take these pieces. Now, there are three pieces here. There are two pieces, three pieces. If, if the function is, uh, if the uh, transform is linear, each piece or each component, I would say, each component should be, again, uh, each component should be a linear expression. Again, uh, if this is a linear transform, the, there are three components here. So each of its components, again, each of it, its components, each of them, should be linear. Should be a linear expression. What is a linear? What's a linear? Ah, this is a linear expression. That means you should combine the variables by addition and scalar multiplication only. You cannot multiply two variables because you know in grade one we haven't learned something like this. We learned only in grade one and two. We learned how to add and how to multiply by a number. Okay, right. Now tell me. With near, there are three pieces. What about this one? Is it linear? Yes. Why? You used you have used addition and scalar multiplication to get this. Yes. Yes. Because this 2x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3. Fine. This is also linear. What about this one? Is this linear? The top one. No. Why not? You have x2 squared. x2 times x2. Man, we didn't learn something like that in, in grade one. Right? Therefore, this non-linear or not linear, I would say. Okay. What about the second one? This linear addition and scale of multiplication is there. This also linear because you know 3x1 plus 0x2. Fine. This 1x1 plus 1x2. Linear. Both are linear expression. All should be linear, right? What about this one? Third one. Linear. So this is a linear expression. This is a linear expression. So third one is also linear. Right? One more. Some, we will go through some examples. Okay. You better take this down. I'll give you just one minute. If you are done, please let me know. But you see, you, you see, guys, you, you, you uh, I mean, if you want to take something down, you do it when I, sometimes before I do it, right? Uh, anyway, this, this, what, uh, this, how you identify a linear transformation, just by common sense. You know, linear algebra is an easy subject, but you could, you would feel it like that. You could have felt it like that if you were there for those uh, sessions, but you didn't. 
you root there. Always, always you have to plan for the future. Otherwise, you know, it, you will end up like Sri Lanka. Right. Okay. Again, you know, here linear means that uh, you can do the transform and the addition in any order. That's what it means. Right. Okay. The yeah, addition and the application of the transformation can be interchanged. Still, you get the same answer. That's what it says. In real life, sometimes you can say uh, you first do the PhD and then marry, then get married. Oh, you can get married and do the PhD. Both are the same. But uh, the, uh, but what about this one? You get married and then die. You first die and get married. Are the are those two the same? No. That means marriage doesn't preserve under the death, but marriage does uh, does preserve under PhD. The same thing again. Uh, you know, uh, getting impregnated. You know what, what it means, right? You are there. Are not, I don't, don't think anybody who is less than 18 years. So we can talk about those things so openly. So getting impregnated and then get married. Oh, get married and getting impregnated. At the end of the day, both are the same. So that means what? Getting impregnated preserves under marriage. Uh, it's like that, right? Okay. Now, uh, here, I mean, you reverse the order, still you get the same same result. That's what it means here. But uh, it should work under scalar multiplication and addition. But this is the easy way of looking at that. Hmm? The, again, let me uh, do some, some examples, a couple of examples. Then we can uh, go to the matrix of linear transform. Here we are simply beating around the, the bush. I mean, it's the same thing we took over and over again. Now, uh, what about this one? Uh, another example. Uh, okay. What about these two? Which of, which of them is linear? Now here first, let's try to understand the uh, domain and the codomain. 
here in the original space you have r it's r2 this also r2 there are two pieces here it is r3 the target space is r1 there's only one piece but which one is linear which one is not is this linear? Yes or no? The second one. I don't see any answers. Yes. What about the first one? No, why not? It's linear, right? Because this is a linear expression. This, uh, like, we look ax1 plus bx2 plus, I mean, B ax1 plus bx2, right? Look, 1x1 plus, uh, is this linear? No, because of this addition, it's not linear. So, it's not linear. Now, if the matrix is linear, you can come up with, Now let's consider this one. So if you, is this linear or not? Consider. Is it linear or not? Linear. Now, we, this is not an example. Huh? Now, we are going to uh, do something else. Now, since this is like the left-hand side of a system of equations, you can write it like this, as a product of matrices. Now, uh, 3x1, so you need 3, you have 1, but you have none for x3. Similarly, for the second row, the coefficient is 1, 2, 1. Here, 0, 1, 3. Ah, you can write it like this. So, Tx, I write this way as x, can be written as ax. That means what? Application of the transform transformation or transform is the same as multiplication by a matrix. That means what? That means A represents T. So A is the matrix of transform of T. Right? So A is a matrix of transform of T. Right? Uh, You can find the matri matrices of linear matrices of anyway, so right? of linear transforms. I write the answers here. Here it is what you delete the variables. So you get three, one in the same fashion. You get one, three. Here, one, one. Here, three, zero. Ah, there are there's a, there's a there's a variable x3 also. So zero. Here, three, zero, zero. 
601. Those are the matrices of linear transforms. So the matrix of linear transforms. Now we will do some examples. Right. No, it's something. Right. Now, first find the matrix of linear transform. This is what you have. You can write it like this, right? Is error stuff. So this is the matrix of linear transform. So in the place of Tx, you can write Ax. Now let's find T squared x. Means this one, no? T applied to Tx. You first find Tx and then apply T on top of that. So you know that This is AX. Right? TX is AX. Now, since A is linear, you know, uh, if you have constant, you can pull it out. Even if you have a matrix, you can pull it out. You pull out A. So you have this one. What is this? This also AX. Your TX is AX. Now what happens is this a squared x. You find a squared now. 3, 1, 1, 3. 3, 1, 1, 3. x. Later we'll take care of x. Now let's multiply these two. Uh, 3 times 3, 9, 10. 
3, 3, 6, 6, 10. Now in the place of x, I'll write this one. Now, if you want to write it in this form, 10x1 plus 6x2. Six, 6x1 six, six, plus 10x2. Right? Now, if you want, you can do this one. This two. So t squared applied to this one is what? x1 is 1, x2 is 0. So this 1, this 0. Therefore, you get 10, 6. t squared applied to this one is this 0, this is 1. x1, this x1, this x2, right? So 6, 10. I hope so. You have some idea now. It's not a full copy of you, it's just to give you some idea. Because you have know that you have no clue. You can always use this one. T squared x is a squared x. T cube x is a cube x. Like that. Right. Okay. If you need time, let me know. Huh? Otherwise, I'll. I mean, I don't. I, I can't see you guys. Therefore, if you need uh, more time, please let me know. I think uh, you are not like yellow students. You when you when I explain you at the same time, you can take this take the the note down. Now let's do one more example. Then you do this one. Okay, you first do that one. Huh?
here this given as a row it doesn't matter you can do it in either way make a column make a make a row it doesn't matter This problem is in fact uh, useless, but it will be helpful for you uh, in preparing for the paper. Okay. Now we'll do this one. Now show that T is linear. Now uh, this can be any polynomial, right? Okay. So we can uh, do it like this. You know, the first one. You take two polynomials. P and Q. This is a, okay. I, I should tell you what this is. P2 is the degree 2 polynomials. Work the sum P2 is P2 is a degree 2 polynomials. So if you have Px, you can find uh, uh, P minus 2, minus 2 substitute current. You get the first component of this vector. Then P0, x equal to 0, and make you know, x equal to 2, and make it. So you have three components here. So it is P2 to R3. For any polynomial, any quadratic polynomial, you get some three pieces like this. Now we need to show that T is linear. That means we should show that, show what? We should show that T preserves under addition and scalar multiplication. So these are in P2. Uh, take A is a real number. A is a real number. Now you can uh, show it like this. First one, P A P X. We'll, we'll find A P X. Now, uh, if you have A P X, now what would you get here? Still, you find minus two, right? You substitute minus two here. A is free of X. So uh, it is the first component is A P minus two. Second component, A P zero. Third component, if you substitute two, A P two. Then you can uh, do it like this. You can pull out A, right? A is common to everything. So this is what? This is simply TPX. A times TPX. Ah. Look, scalar multiplication first, then you apply the transformation 
or you apply the transformation name, scale multiplication follows after that. So no matter what, uh, what the order you do, you get the same result. Now, PPX plus QX. So first one, you substitute minus two. So you get P minus two plus Q minus two. Then the next component, you substitute this one, this one here, zero. Here the, there you have some, so P zero plus Q zero. Then you substitute two. P2 plus Q2. Now you can write this as sum of two matrices. P minus 2, comma, oh, you don't have, yeah, you, then P0, P2 plus the other one, Q minus 2, Q0, Q2. So what is this? This TPX, this is TQX. Ah, look, addition first, you then apply the transformation. No, you apply the transformations and then add. Therefore, T is linear. Both are the same, right? That's the first part. Okay, you take that down. Right. Now we'll go for the second part. Now, if Px is x squared plus x plus 2, 
So we need to find the image of this. That means this polynomial give you a point somewhere. That's what it says. This, if you have any polynomial, it give you some point. Now we are going to find the correspond the point in R three corresponding to this one. This point, right? In R three means we have a point in R three here. So we'll find my we'll put minus two first. So minus two squared. Because p p minus two should be the first element. Uh, then minus two plus two. That is the first component. Then p zero. When you substitute zero, it is two. When you substitute uh, two, you get two squared plus two plus two. Ah, oh, sorry. What is this? Sorry, I wrote something else. X squared plus six plus two. Now, minus, when you plug in minus two for this one, you get the first component. When you plug in zero, you get two. When you plug in two, you get so this four, two, eight. That's a point corresponding to this polynomial. Third one, I do it. I don't do the third one because you know uh, that's why I want to do it a long time ago. You know, if I give you give you the the relationship between those things, then I could have targeted the questions. Now, now you since you don't have any idea, first you need to get the idea just to do the do the problem because you know if you just prepare for the past papers only. Then, if you if the problem is little different from the past paper, then you cannot do it if you don't have the idea. So first, we need to get the idea. So for the time being, I'll skip this one uh, because we have limited time, right? So we have to maximize the time. Maximize it. That's another. We'll do one more, one more example. For some little down the column, even you can do it. Write it like this as well. Um, One second. Mm -hmm. This one.
Right. So here, uh, these are given like this. If you want, you can write it in the column format. So the first component goes like this. I mean, you can do it in either way. With the row format also, you can do it. So you can write it like this, right? So this old zeros, you get old zeros. Then uh, x1 is 1, these two are zeros. x1 and x2, both are equal to 1, this is 0. Now this is the matrix of transformation A. Then you have to show that T cube x is 0. What is T cube x? T cube x is A cube x. We, show, we saw that earlier. T squared is A squared x. Now find A, T A cube. We'll multiply these two together first. Sorry, sorry. You know, if you have like three matrices, you can multiply two of them uh, without changing the order anyway. You can multiply them. I'll write the answer. Uh, here it is zero, uh, one, one, zero. You multiply this one by this, you get one, uh, one, one zero, zero, zero. Get this one. Then you multiply these two. What will you get? Zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, zero. You get a null vector. So, I mean, t, I mean, first you find TQ. That's easier for you. First take two of them. I mean, if you have three matrices together by Associative law, you can take any two together and multiply. Either you can take these two as well. It doesn't matter. You get the same answer. But you cannot interchange with uh, matrices. I mean, you can multiply. I don't have to show how they are multiplied. A lot of stuff, right? So, Uh, a cube is here, right? So T cube X is A cube X. It's a null vector. Because A cube is zero, right? Null vector times X is a null vector. Therefore, now third part, This one. Now, is it this t squared x? Now you uh, you need to find t is it. So apply t. Sorry, this is it, Victor. So apply t to both sides. So you get t cube, right? Like a cube, a squared times a is a squared, a cube, uh, t times t squared is t cube. t applied on top of t squared is t cube. This is zero, right? We showed that it is zero. Fourth one. Uh, u is t squared x. So these are linear transforms. You can freely apply uh, them. Now this is given. You want to find t u. So you apply T for this side as well. It's linear, right? So you take one at a time and apply. So T applied to this one is T cube X. 
T applied to this one is T, T times T cube X. But this is zero, right? This is zero. This is also zero. Because this part is zero. Since it is linear, It's an null vector. I mean, linear means you can apply like this, like like the derivative, like sigma function, like that. Yeah, if you like, if it's a d operator, if you have a second derivative, you you differentiate again, you get the third derivative, like that. But here, this is already zero. I mean, I could have put zero here at the first place. Uh, now we'll do one uh, one theory. Rather than considering null space and uh, image, you can I mean, later later some because we have your own copy of series, right? So uh, we'll do something like this now. Change of which is so change of variables. Hmm? Here we are. I mean, what I want to do is that I want to do something uh, which goes hand in hand with the forthcoming chapters. So that's what I want to do it like this. Uh, if if it is a little bit different from your notations, please uh, you go through that and get it corrected. Say you have a linear transformation like this. is the uh, matrix of linear transformation. Now, suppose that you have another, you have basis like so the change of variable. Suppose that it, it is like this. Huh? Suppose that you have uh, a matrix P is non-singular. You know what it is. Non-singular means not uh, I mean, it does have a, it has the inverse. Both are the same. Huh? Suppose x is equal to p in y. That means this. This x1, x2, x3, the axis. You have some other set y1, y2, y3. They are rotated, though they may be multiplied, or whatever. Hmm? 
the relationship is x is equal to py. If you want to find y, y is what? p inverse x. You multiply both sides by p inverse, then this should be i, you get p inverse to this side. Now, now I have I have a, I have to answer one, ask one question from you guys. Still, are you with me? Do you understand what I am talking about up to this point? Yes or no? Uh, if you don't understand, please let me know. Oh, tell me something. Give me some feedback. And non-singular. Non-singular means something that you have learned in your A-levels. Non-singular means in singular medium it is uh, uh, anapurva. Anapurva. Because, you know, if you write a matrix, square matrix, almost all the time you have an inverse. Pratiloma Athena. But very rarely uh, there are some matrices where you don't have an inverse because the determinant is zero. Karna, determinant is zero. Uh, you don't have the inverse. Singular means weird. Singular. Singular means amut, weird. Like in, in, the, in the context of matrices, uh, we rarely find a matrix which don't have which doesn't have an inverse. singular. If a matrix has an inverse, we call it as non-singular. In A levels, you call it as anapuranias. Singular uh, Apuranias, Apuran Amutu. Weird. Amutu can, uh, in reality, you see those type of matrices. Usually, if you write an arbitrary matrix, almost all the time it will be non singular. Innosekat Tiena again. Eka Mang Kalm Innoskar the Ikrahim at the Gerald Solidan Nick. Is that clear? Non singular means P innos exists. Erul Lakar Noy. Are you with me? Uh, did you understand it? I'm asking the person who asked this question. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, apart from that, have you understood it? Apart from this this one, have you understood the uh, have you understood what I did earlier? Like linear transformation, matrix of linear linear transformation and the examples we did? Okay. Only two of you are answering me. How many are there? All right. So now you have like some connection between these two. Here you have some axes in the this may be the standard basis x axis, y axis, and z axis. You have a, some rotation and probably their lengths are different. Hmm? But the connection between these two is this one. Now, how do you okay? You have a certain linear transformation here. It is a, a self-transformation, like you, you have, say, R3 to R3, or R2 to R2. This may be, I'll write R into R in. Same space, so it's a square matrix. Uh, the transformation takes the vectors onto itself. So that's this, that's this transformation. Now, you have different axes, same number of axes, say R3. R3 would be fine for us here. Now you have a different set of axes. The relationship, the relationship between these two axes is this one. For example, say uh, y1 is oh, well, then I have to talk about the inverse. Uh, anyway, uh, we, we'll, we'll have it like, like this. Now, uh, we want to find the linear transformation with respect to this system, this axis. So that means we have to replace x by y. So how do you do this? I'll write in the place of x, I'll write py. In the place of x, I'll write py. Now, 
Now, since t is linear, you can pull out constants. Constant operators. So I'll put, pull out p outside. You know, uh, here you apply the transformation, then multiply by p, or you multiply it by p and apply the transformation. It doesn't matter, right? You can change the order when it comes to scale of multiplication and uh, uh, and what and addition. Here you have a p y. Now we need to get rid of this p. In a levels, you know how to do it. You multiply it by p inverse. It's p. You multiply both sides by p inverse. Now these two will go away. This i. Now, i times anything is this, so ty. Uh, this is p no say p. What does that mean? Earlier in this space, the, trans the matrix of transformation is A. Now, with respect to the this, this ax these axes, it is this one, new matrix of transformation. Is what P no CP. Okay, you take that down. Then uh, we have to go for orthogonal transformations as well. But you better uh, stick to your notations. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the first year students. OK. Now, we'll see. Uh, we'll uh, get into this more. Right. Now, okay, we went through the bases earlier, but long time ago, huh? bases, like, uh, you know, um, um, first spanning sets, we call this one. Uh, spanning set is uh, a set of vectors with uh, with those uh, the, with the uh, sorry, I mean sorry for which the linear com uh, of which the linear combination of those vectors can span the entire space. Uh, we did this, that earlier, right? Now basis, right -right basis, huh? basis, but right, -right basis. Uh, this part you have the exact number of vectors that you need. Say you are in R3, you need ex you have only three vectors here. If you are in R2, you have only two vectors which are independent. And you can span, I mean, 
you can sp spend the entire space using those minimum number of factors. Then you have orthogonal vectors, orthogonal basis. But what do you mean by, by an orthogonal basis? Means those vectors, say in R3, you have V2, V1, V2, and V3. And also each the modulus of each vector, length of each vector is equal to one. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Wrong. Each vector is perpendicular to the other vector. Bi is perpendicular to Vj. Normal. They are normal to each other. Like say, uh, for example, 2i, 3j plus 5k. All are perpendicular to each other. Then, that's also not enough for us. You have orthonormal basis. Means, say for R3, you have three vectors. Uh, they are mutually perpendicular, like orthogonal, but this is more, more special than that. All the vectors are unit vectors. That means ijk. If you take ijk, it is rotated like this. Now, next one, standard basis. Means what? For R3 is IJK. This means the IJK, but it is rotated. Lengths are deep. lengths are the same. One on one, but rotated. Here rotated then, then you mark it is like this. Here it is IJK. Here this way we may have been rotated like this. Here still they are perpendicular. Lengths may be different. Orthogonal basis is this. However, if you write this one, I'll give you one example. Orthonormal basis, one example for orthonormal basis in R3. Uh, this one. 1 of square root 6, minus 2 of square root 6, minus 2. This 1 of square root 6. Next one, I take 1 of square root 2, 0, minus 1 of square root 2. 1 of square root 3. If you take the dot products, uh, I, I will do an example like that. This is an orthonormal basis. Magnitudes are 1. We went through some examples like that. Right? Hmm? Anyway, let me uh, do one example like this. So, this is an orthonormal basis. Hmm? This is a standard basis. You know, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Right. Uh, you take that down. This is what we went through under vector spaces. But long time ago. Shall we take a little break now? It's 5.30 almost. We'll take a break of 10 minutes and then I'll come back. Hmm? Because we need to go through like go through orthogonal matrices and stuff like that.
Right? We'll take a 10 minute break and then I'll come back and do the rest. We can start eigenvectors and eigenvalues today. Hmm? Okay. Now, it's a, I mean, you could have done it this last semester. I mean, during the, not last semester, during the, I'm mean, for the first year, I mean, uh, during the orientation period. But you guys, you guys didn't collaborate, didn't, I mean, didn't uh, support that idea. Now we don't have enough time because, you know, we have only four days. Okay. So I'll, uh, we'll take a little break and we'll start, we'll resume uh, after 10 minutes.
So we support it, right? So anyway, we'll uh, start from, I mean, at this point. Now, this is the review of the types of bases we have, <laughs> right? Uh, can you hear me clearly? Guys, can you hear me clearly? No, only one person is answering all the time. What about the others? Okay, right, thanks. Now, if you if you pay special attention to this one, because this is the closest to the standard basis. If you want to have a little rotation, or if you want to have a uh, have some kind of a little change to the standard basis, this is the closest one. So, so if you investigate more on this one, right? Uh, we'll uh, consider the same one again. I'll form a matrix P using this. I'll arrange these vectors as columns. I went through this earlier, but again, don't I go right? So it's worth uh, recalling this again. Now uh, this P, this and uh, now the columns of P comprises an orthogonal, and in fact an orthonormal basis. Now if I take P transpose P, P transpose P. Now, if transpose means I write this uh, as a row. I write this one as the second row. I write this the third column as the third row. Similarly, I write P here. Right now, I'll perform the multiplication. Right, uh, you know how they are multiplied. Right, first column. Uh, how can I do it? Okay. First column is multiplied by this one. So when you you know that uh, when you have square root six in the downstairs, uh, square root six times square root six is six. So this one over six plus this 4 over 6. This is 1 over 6. Likewise, you can perform the multiplication. Here, always in this row, you have square root 2 in, at the bottom. Here, you have square root 6. So you have square root 12 in the bottom. So here, you have 1. 0 times minus 2 is 0. Minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. Ah, it's zero. 
Now, when you multiply this one and this one, this uh, here you always have square root 6, here you will always have square root 3. So, square root 18 is in the downstairs. Uh, this is 1, minus 2, 1. Hmm? Again, you can, uh, I, I'll do the multiplication. Now, second column with this, square root 2, square root 6. So, in the downstairs, you have square root 12, 1. 0 minus 1. Here, when you multiply the second column of this with the second row of the first matrix, square root 2 times square root 2, you always get half. So it is uh, half plus 0 plus half. Hmm? Then when you multiply this one with, sorry, this one with this, you get square root 6 in the downstairs because Square root 3 times square root 2 is square root 6. So 1, 0, minus 1. You know, you can perform the multiplications like that. Uh, this is square root 18. Here, when you multiply these two, you get 1 third, 1 third, 1 third. Why do you get this shape? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. You know that if you, uh, if you denote vectors uh, like uh, matrices, now this vector, now product of these vectors means this, uh, this row and this column is what? This means a dot product between the same vectors, dot product of this one with this. So if you take the dot product with the same one, you get the what? A dot A is modulus A squared. This is, the, this is equal to the uh, square of the modulus. But it's a unit vector. Therefore, you, if you, the square of the modulus of the unit vector is 1. When you take these two vectors, this means the dot product between two. Because you know, these vectors are from orthonormal basis. So that means they are mutually perpendicular. So if you take the dot product between two mutually perpendicular vectors, you get zeros. So all the off diagonal elements will be zero, but in the main diagonal you get one because the uh, main diagonal you get the square of the modulus. So this is I. Now look. You have P, you multiply it by some matrix, then you get I. This means what? P transpose is in fact P inverse. Right? Okay. Can you remember? Again, let me let me go back to this one. In the in the when you transform coordinates, look what happens. The new 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 matrix of transformation is P inverse AP. It's hard to find P inverse. You know how hard it is. Unless you don't use a computer. Uh, sorry, unless you use a computer, it will be extremely hard to find inverse. But now, look. If you have a have P like this, then P transpose is, I mean, finding the P trans, finding P transpose is simply a piece of cake. It is, sorry, finding the inverse is a piece of cake. It is P transpose. Right? So, if, if you use, now, for this coordinate transformation, if you use P so that the, the, the columns of P are from orthonormal basis, are from orthonormal basis, like this, then you can find P inverse as a P transform, as P transform. Therefore, we prefer to have P whose columns are columns form an orthonormal basis. Orthonormal. basis 
but there is a slight abuse of language why when p comprises columns uh, which are which form an orthonormal basis p should should have called orthonormal vector sorry orthonormal matrix so this called orthonormal matrix is an orthonormal matrix Is, it, does it sound weird? Orthonormal matrix. I haven't heard. I haven't heard a word like that. Orthonormal matrix. Yes, it's called orthogonal matrix. It's weird, right? It's kind of a slight abuse of language because you know, uh, in fact, P comprises orthonormal uh, uh, bases. I mean, if you take the columns of P, they form an orthonormal basis. How is it called an orthogonal matrix? So when you have an orthogonal matrix, you can find its inverse as the transpose. One advantage. The second advantage is all the rotations in robotics, in robotics or in mechanics, all the rotations can be modeled using orthogonal matrices. Therefore, we like to have When you talk practically, right? Say uh, a robot, uh, uh, say a robot arm is like this now. So it's rotated like this. So we, it's a rotation in R three. So if if it's a if it it's really hard for me because of the, the outside noise is there. Uh, does that disturb you? Because I I feel like that is disturbing. So I'm shouting out. So it's hard for me. Can you hear that? Uh, that thing. Uh, can you hear that? The... Okay, okay, okay. Ah, then it's okay. Thanks. I feel like because it's really disturbing me. Then I thought, uh, okay, probably the uh, the microphone of the phone doesn't capture it. So okay, then it's easier for me. All right, guys. So uh, when P comprises. Uh, So if the columns of P are from uh, orthonormal basis, we call the matrix as orthogonal matrix, right? That's one thing. If you have an orthogonal matrix, you can find P in the sense P transpose. One advantage. The second advantage is that any rotation of a robot arm can be modeled by uh, an ortho Gural matrix. There's a group called O3, O3 group. O3 comprises all the auto no auto gural matrices. If you learn robotics in a differential geometric uh, platform, you always need those type of groups, right? Uh, okay. Now, how do you find a similar matrix like this? So that you can come up with all the rotations and stuff like that, uh, and you can handle all the rotations very easy. You then you know uh, the matrix of transform. Uh, I mean linear transform. The new matrix of linear transform easily. So how can you do that? Ah, okay. Then we'll see what we can do. Okay, you. If you, I'll give you one minute to take this down. I did this earlier as well, but uh, I, 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 I just want to uh, recall it, you know, since I have done it long time ago. Okay, now this is a nice part. Now we are heading into some interesting uh, region, right? So interesting arena or whatever, right? Now. Consider, let's consider some linear transform, right?
Now let's find the image of this vector. Mm, one, one, one. 1, 0, minus 1. Under T. We'll see what happens here. Okay, we'll find T 1, 1, 1. Uh, what is this? X1 is 1, X2 is 1, X3 is 1. What is this? 3 plus 1. Here 1 plus 2 plus 1. Because all the variables are equal to 1, right? Here 1 plus 3. 4, 4, 4. Now we'll find this one. X1 is 1, X2 is 0. So it is 3. X1 is 1, X2 is 0, X3 is minus 1. So 1 minus 1. X3 is 0, you don't have to write it. This is minus 1, so minus 3. Next one, 1 minus 2, 1. Uh, so image is what? 1, so 3. X2 is minus 2. This minus 2. X1 is uh, 1. This minus 2. So 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. X3 is again 1. X2 is minus 2. This 1. So it is 3. So if you add them 1. Minus 2 because 1 minus 4 plus 1. This one. Finally, 1 to 1. You can do it in the same way. X1 is 1, X2 is 2. 3 plus 2. Here you have 1 plus 4 plus 1. Here you get X2 is 2. Now look, some brain wave came. Look, I got some brain wave. Brain wave means what? A nice idea. Look, I can pull out this four. Here I can pull out this three so that I can get the same vector here. Look, look, look at these two. Here. What about this one? I can just pull out one. Here. But what can you pull out from this one? Okay, I, I did these three. I went through these three and I pulled out a constant. Which constant can you pull out from this one? The any person who is with tiny brain can do this. What is it? What's the constant you can pull out? Person with tiny brain can do it, but I cannot do it. That's what I'm, I'm seeking your help. I cannot do it. I think you also cannot do it. Yeah, you cannot do anything. You cannot pull, pull out anything. Here. Look. If you consider these three, this nice thing, this means what? Hmm? It's something miraculous. What is this? Look, it's kind of a magic. You have a certain vector. Say this is the vector. When you apply this transformation, look what happens. Nothing happens. It is not rotated. Its uh, length is increased like this. Not rotated. Similarly, if you take this one, the same thing. If you take this one, it is the same. It is again the same. Uh, this is R3 to R3. 
So if it is from R3 to R3, you can have at most three, three vectors like this so that their directions are unchanged. Man, what are the, what is that? One, 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 zero, minus one, one, minus two, one. Oh, sorry. What is this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, unchanged. Under T, under the transformation T. I'm sorry. So you take that down. Man, this is something I have never expected. I just gave you an example. And coincidentally, I got something like this. What is that? Mm, I don't understand. We'll see. Okay, you take that down. And unfortunately, for this one, it did work. Right. Now, we'll do one more. Consider this transformation. Uh, it's okay, yes. Okay, you find them. I straight away write the answer, but you find them. Thank you. 
Right. What is this? This is uh, 4, 4, 4. So you, again, you can pull out 4. You get 1, 1, 1. What about next one? Here you get 1, 0, minus 1. Here, what would, you, what would you get? The same thing, right? Is it possible? What the hell is going on here? Something is fishy, right? We'll see what, what, what happens here. Uh, what is the matrix of linear transformation in the previous one? This one. Matrix of linear transformation. I will write this A. You can straight away write this, right? Uh, 3, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, uh, 0, 1, 3. Right? Hold on. What is the matrix of linear transformation here? 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2. Is there anybody who is a smart guy, yeah, some smart uh, girl or boy? Try to find the determinant of this for me. The determinant of this for me. I know the value, but you find it for me. Eighteen, no. Because I know a shortcut method, that's why I, I, I said it's wrong. Find, find determinant A. Twelve. That is correct. In this, in the second problem, somebody tell me the determinant A. Tell me what the determinant of A is. Hmm? Four. Correct. Thanks. It's correct. Now look. It's something more. I mean, more fishy now. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this, huh? It's weird. This is called the main diagonal of this matrix. But it's the sum of these three numbers. Sum of these three numbers. What is the sum of those three numbers? Sum. 3 plus 2, 2 plus 3. 8. Okay, good. Now, we have these, the, the constants, the constants pulled out from this, this magic thing. You got the, you put some a vector there. After the transformation, you got the same vector like this, but uh, directions have been, sorry, uh, Ah, sorry, the direction uh, remains unchanged, but it is ma magnified. It is multiplied by some constant. Here, with respect to this vector, it is 4. With respect to this vector, it is 3. There are only three vectors because it is in R3. Uh, for this one, you have the magnitude fact, the magnification factor is 1. What is the sum of these three magnification factors? 4 plus 3 plus 1. What is it? I cannot tell because I don't have a calculator. Tell me what is what the sum is. Eight. Eight. Hold on, hold on. This was also eight. Sum of these three is also eight. Man. What is that? What's going on? Okay. What about this case? What is the sum of these three numbers? Four plus one plus one. I don't have a calculator. Add, add those three for me. 4 plus 1 plus 1, 6. What about this? 
2 plus 2 plus 2. 6. What the hell is going on? Hmm? And again, another thing. You told me the determinant of A was 12. I, when I asked you, you told me that it, was, it is 12, right? If you multiply these three numbers, 4 times 3 times 1, what is 4 times 3? 4 times 3 is, uh, what is it, 12? 12 times 1, 12. Ah, this is also 12. This is a coincidence, right? We'll go for the second one. 4 times 1 times 1. Ah, it's easy for me. 4 times 1 is 4 times 1, 4. Ah, this is also 4. So determinant is the product of these three. The trace, this is called the trace. Trace is the sum of these three. So here trace is 6. Here in the previous case, trace A is 8. The trace trim, C is equal to the sum of these values. Uh, determinant is the product of these values. Now look, these are very important values. And these vectors are also very important. Using these values and using these vectors, you can characterize the whole transformation. Characterize means lakshan. It is like this. Okay, I have a uh, question for you. There's a corrupted person, a politician, a politician, corrupted person who waged the war and uh, waged the civil war and uh, won it. Uh, he has a mustache. Who is the fellow? Who is a corrupted person but waged the war successfully and uh, has a mustache. Who is that guy? Hey, there are 40 people, you don't know who that person is. At least one answer. Okay. Hitler got away, no. Sri Lankan politician. Hitler uh, was not a corrupted person. Gota, we didn't wage a as a politician, right? So that, those are wrong answers. First answer was correct. Somebody gave Mahindra Rajapaksh, yes. Now another person. Uh, who has a lot of foreign uh, contacts? Or foreign con Yeah. Uh, okay. Who, who has a very poor, uh, like when it comes to defense, who has a very poor strategy? But when it comes to economics, who has a very good strategy? Who doesn't have a mustache? A party leader. Who is that? Funny. Okay. Good, the correct answer. Now, who is very uncorrupted, uh, really uncorrupted person, uh, who has a very good plan, uh, who has a mustache, but uh, who is little reluctant to get the country when the country is in dire need? Okay, there's another person, uh, the fourth one. No? Uh, who is, uh, okay, the person uh, who has a big mouth and doesn't have any plan or strategy, uh, doesn't have any ability to do anything, but has a big mouth, a party leader. Who is that? Uh, so yes, that's also correct. Now, that means what? You can characterize a person uh, using some kind of traits. Likewise, using these three values or these vectors, you can characterize, especially using these values, you can characterize this transformation. Look, there are a lot of connections, right? Matrix of transformation and these values are related. Uh, they are the, the product is equal to the determinant, sum is equal to the traits and stuff like that. So, using these values, you can characterize the transformation. Hmm? Right? So, using these scalar values or magnification factors, I'll write it pertaining to this problem. For one 
one. One can characterize, can luxury characterize. T. So, 411 are called characteristic values. Characteristic, characteristic, characteristic values. There's a German word for that. The German word is eigenvalues. Eigen, but a single word. Da? And these vectors are called characteristic vectors, and those vectors in German are called eigenvectors. Now, we'll get into eigenvectors now. If you use eigenvectors, uh, you like you can come up with an orthogonal basis. So, we'll get into eigenvectors now. So you can, okay, you take it down. So, from linear transformations, you automatically get into what? Linear, uh, sorry, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. The next chapter, chapter six. I could have done kernel and stuff like that. Then what happens is our path will be disturbed. It is like this. Uh, Go to was there. Uh, last nine, they, uh, they, its path was disturbed, but finally they came, they came to the track again, came back to the track. Uh, so I don't want to that to happen to our uh, our lesson. So that's why I didn't go to uh, either kernel and dimension. Later you can learn it. We'll go this this way. Yeah? Now eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Six. So, eigenvectors and eigenvalues are related to a transformation, right? So, you consider Tx is equal to Ax, right? You know what it is. A is the matrix of linear transformation. Matrix of P. Now, what is this? Now, you can write in the place of T, you can write X, right? Sorry, A, A. If this is a vector, now what happens? If it is an eigenvector, look what happens. Uh, instead of T, I write A, because PX is AX. So AX is equal to a constant times X, the same vector. AX is equal to a constant times X. AX is equal to a constant times X. So, if... Lambda is an eigenvalue. Of A. Then, what is the relationship? Look, Tx can Ax money. So Ax, this, you can consider this as Ax. Ah, a particular vector, then we go in. Scale of multiply, multiplication at the moment. So Ax is lambda x. Lambda the eigenvalue. X tama eigenvecting. Ne? Ekane. Application of the transformation e is equal to the multiplication by a matrix is equal to multiplication by a constant. Come here, right? It's good. Where X is the eigenvector. Now, how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors? We'll see. We'll bring this down to this side. But you cannot pull out x. If you pull out x, you get a minus lambda. A can matrix set, lambda can value here. So you cannot uh, perform the uh, subtraction. Therefore, I will multiply this by i. 
this null matrix. Now I can pull out X. Now, this is the, uh, in, the, in the right hand side, you have zero. Now I have to tell something about this. When you have an equation where you, in the right hand side, you have zeros. This is a record, I will record something. Huh? Say, for example, x minus y is zero, x plus y is also zero. I take R2 case. So x minus y is zero means this line. X, play, x plus y is equal to zero means this line. Hmm? So what does that mean? Make up a matrix for me You can write it like this. This is one minus one, one one. Make a dead B kilogram, A kilometer zero, B kilogram, B kilogram. So what is dead B? Let B is 1, minus, minus 1, 2. When determinant is not equal to 0, what is the solution? We have the solution. X is equal to 0, Y is equal to 0. On the other hand, let's take this one. X minus Y is equal to 0. 2X minus 2Y is equal to 0. What the hell is that? You get the same, same equation, right? First one is this x minus y is equal to 0. Then you have another line which is 2x minus 2y is equal to 0. So two lines overlap. So what are the solutions? There are infinite, this called, this called useless solutions, not trivial solutions. Here, what happens? We'll see. If you write the matrix, write this in the matrix form, it is like this. Uh, then this red B. Red B is uh, minus 2 minus uh, minus 2, 0. Now, oh, it is 0. So you get uh, two overlapping lines. That means what? Here x is not t equal to 0. If you take x is equal to t, y is equal to t. That means you have non-zero solutions. Even though the right hand side is 0, you have non-zero solutions. Look, x is 2, y is 2. x is 3, y is 3. All are solutions. Therefore, t is a parameter, t is in a real number. So there are infinite solutions. So we called Non-trivial. Trivial means can be done negative. Non-trivial. It's a good look at the wind. Up here then x will the gandu mono solutions. X is the vector, x is an eigenvector. So to have x to be non-zero, the mayo get the whole bit of bindu the right hand sides are zero. To have a non-zero solution for this. Uh, to have a non-zero in this type, to have a non-zero solution to this, this dead B, or oh, this coefficient matrix should be zero. With a gana hadu mege, we will have it. We put the put the gana with the gana with the gana. Now, from this uh, one, to have x to be non-zero, man, you can take this one. A minus lambda i determinant of this is zero. That's it. Now we'll do an example. Consider make a mother number. Find the 
matrix say oh, so, 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 sorry i would i would have lift this so that you can take this down me wala tumhe har tiyan liya gana meke first this one you want video post kar liya gana deri kama ne meke tiyan tiyan har tiyan liya gana right we not debug it i'll give you 30 seconds See, you know, you know, that was the second example I took just to explain what an eigenvector is, right? now this is what an eigen value is metana making passe api andona mekata mukada because we need to have some non zero vector for this one therefore this should be zero
right now uh, since we uh, need non trivial solutions we have to go for this go for, go in this path so the determinant should be zero now we'll do this example We'll find unit eigen vectors. Huh? That means their magnitude should be one. Right. We'll do this problem. You can find the matrix of transformation. I, I want to finish everything. I think I want to finish uh, the quadratic forms as well. But I think uh, we better, I mean, finish the, with this problem. Tomorrow I'll finish everything. Huh? But I earlier, Promised you to do like vector space, vector fields, uh, like group strings and vector fields, but uh, uh, group strings, fields, and vector space. But I don't think I have time for that. Uh, but tomorrow I'll finish the other parts. Right. So the numbers become three one zero, yeah, one two one zero one three. This A. That's the matrix of linear transformation. So we need to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So you know. You multiply this matrix by a vector. It is. It should be equal to the scalar multiplication of the vector. It is not rotated. Those are the uh, those whose directions are fixed. Those are the eigenvectors. E x is non-zero. I will write it later. Now bring this lambda to the other side, like we did earlier. Now multiply. This by i. Now you pull out x. Okay, take that down up to this point. The finding these eigenvalues and eigenvectors is a long process, huh? Long and sometimes painstaking process.
Right. So we take the stuff over now. We have to go for the other side. Right. Now. For x to be non-zero. You need to have this one. So yeah, that's not a vector. Determinant should be equal to zero. Now the determinant is this. This A minus lambda times I. Now you know three minus lambda. Lambda can be subtracted from the main diagonal. That's what you get. Now uh, you can find lambda. Either you can uh, expand this, expand the determinant. That's one way of doing it. But if you expand it, you get this one. Minus lambda cube plus 8 lambda squared plus 12 minus 19 lambda. Then you can solve it using a Fibonacci theorem. Oh, right. Oh, you can use uh, the properties of determinants. You know, you can add columns to one column. Uh, it doesn't change the value of the determinant. C1 can be changed to C1 plus C2 plus C3. But why do? Why did? They, why? Do I want to do that? Because if you take the row sum, all the, every, every row you have 4 minus lambda. If you sum them up, 3 minus lambda plus 1 plus 0, 4 minus lambda. If you add these three again, 4 minus lambda. If you add these three again, 4 minus lambda. What I do is, I add all these columns to C1. So you have 4 minus lambda. I mean, all these three added, all these three are added. But I don't change the other two. Now, if you have one uh, row or one column uh, compressing a, uh, some common factor, you can pull it out. We did that earlier, right? Don't say no. We did the same example. Right? Those are the properties of determinants. Huh? Like you can uh, multiply any row by a constant and add it, add it to another column, so add it to another row. It doesn't change the value of the determinant. The same is uh, true for the columns as well. But you cannot divide the row. Then uh, that's what here I do. If you divide the row or column, then the value of the determinant will go down. That's why I put that out. If I divide this, I have to multiply it. To make it equal. Now, again, I can do this. I can change R2 to R2 minus R1. But why do I want to do that? I want I can use this one to make these two elements zeros. Like row operations, even R3 minus R1. I use R1 to make these two elements zeros. So R2 becomes this minus. 1, 0, 2 minus lambda minus 1 is 1 minus lambda, 1 minus 0 is 1. Here, R3 minus R1, 1 minus 1, 0. We did this earlier, 1 minus 1, 0, 3 minus lambda minus 1, 0 is 3 minus lambda. Now, this is uh, upper triangular matrix. So, the determinant is the product of these three. Oh, I forgot to write this one. So, determinant is... 1 times 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda. So lambda is 4, 1, 3. So those are the eigenvalues. Oh, you can simply expand this and uh, use remainder theorem too. Oh, you can, you have the calculator, right? You expand this, use the calculate to solve this, I mean, get the values. That's also easy. You don't have to do this way. 
it's a really but, but you can expand it and use the calculator to find lambda values. I think you can solve polynomials using the calculator, right? You can do that. But this kind of little handy. Again, yeah, look, four times one times three is eight. Four times one times three is twelve. I mean, sorry, four plus one plus three is eight. Four times one times three is the value of the determinant. So determinant is twelve means this matrix is invertible. That means you have an inverse. Okay, is that clear? Guys, have you understood it? Because now I cannot go back and explain these things, but I just want to tell you this is how you can do it because you know. Okay. No, whatever the others. Okay. Is there anybody who didn't understand it? This part is fine, but after that, this this is also fine, but uh, I mean you can uh, do these type of row operations and column operations without actually changing its value. Hmm? Okay. Now, because we, you know, we were doing it, you, I mean, the first case became busy. Uh, I mean, you, 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 because of your uh, first sim makes sense or something like that. That's why we had to even it, I mean, temporarily. And we had to postpone it, but we I did the same problem early. Hmm? Okay, now early means not today, early. Now we need to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, before that, you know, when you find eigenvalues, you we were there. Then only we, uh, I mean, I mean, we force this to be non-zero. Then the determinant should be zero. But now you go back to this level. And uh, we'll find uh, eigenvalues. A minus lambda i times x is equal to zero, right? Okay. Now I'm, I'm I want to go back there. You know what a minus lambda i is? Is this one? Look, you have it here. Right, so we can form the augmented augmented matrix if you want to, or you can leave it like that. Now we are going to find the eigenvectors. Okay, you take that down. Now we are going to find the eigenvectors. We found the eigenvalues. We are one step away. We want to find the eigenvectors. Right. Now we are, we are going to find the eigenvectors. There are three values, so huh? four, one, three. I'll go for one first. When lambda is one, you know these two, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, two. Now, I, I, we, we did civil examples earlier when we were doing uh, linear equations. When you have a system like this, where right-hand side are equal to zero, you go for the augmented matrix. Augmented, you can see the partition. You can see the partition. You can see the partition. 
then you find the etheral form of this. So etheral form. Once you have the etheral form, you get the eigenvector straight away. The etheral form is like this. Like etheral form, you get like etheral form is like this, right? Etheral form is something like this one. We'll go for row reduced etheral form. Every time the first non-zero value of any row is one, right? Every element below one should be zeros. Every first uh, non-zero element in every row should be one. Rabi mukda karani one kine gudda karandu. Me one gudda kam. Me bidan bidan ke maha fraction se ramani R one R two maru karu. There are three operations we can use. We can interchange rows. We can multiply a row by a constant, or we can multiply a row by a constant and add it to another row. Make a one, make a. Me apni yar grade eight or the. How to do it? Manat. Row operations. We have used it uh, when we were in grade eight, right? A equation they are marking. Me ekani kang me yogi karta. Equation le positions marking. We interchange the positions of these two equations. So I write this one first. This has become this. Now you can make this element zero. So how would you do that? You multiply it by minus two and add it to this one. So I am going to change R two. So R two will be what? R don't multiply anything by R two. I mean don't multiply R two by anything. You add you multiply this by minus two and add it to this one. So uh, that means I am not going to change R one. I am not going to change R three. I am going to change this one. So multiply this one by minus two and add it to this zero. Multiply this by minus two. So it is minus two. Add it to this one. Minus one. Multiply this by minus two. It is minus two. Add it to this one. Minus two. And now you make it one. R two. Is multiplied by minus one. So that because you need to make this element one, because now all the elements below this one is equal to zero. After that, you have to go to this one. First, once you make it one, you have to make all the elements below that to equal to zero. Below that, uh, equal to zero. Now uh, you multiply the second row by minus one. So you have this. You are not going to change anything. Uh, answer is yes. Here you don't change anything in R two and R one. You change only R. Sorry. Here, here we are. We remain. We keep R one and R three intact. We are going to change R two only. Right. Now uh, next uh, step, I get the answer. Now I change R three because when you have one, the first non-zero element is one here. You make all the elements below that to zero. So R three minus R two. One 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 zero one two. When you subtract R two from R three, you get this one. Now we have problem. You have two equations only. What is this equation? X one plus X two plus X three is equal to zero. Here you have zero uh, X one, so it's gone. X two plus two x three is equal to zero. We'll take this one. Right, this how you do it. You now this is the diagonal main diagonal. This is the diagonal element sitting above. You take this element, uh, the corresponding variable as p. X one, x two, x three. So this equation is x three. The equation is uh, x uh, x two plus two x three is zero. I take x3 as p because here you have three variables and two equations. You cannot solve. Uh, we did this earlier, right? Therefore, I just uh, take it like this. You take uh, that additional variable because you have one more variable. You take it as t. Now, when x3 is t, you can find x2. It is minus 2t. Uh, then, from this equation, you can find x1. X one plus X two plus X three is equal to zero. Uh, so this is uh, 
minus 2t is plus t. So x1 is t. Now the eigenvector is what is y eigenvector? This is x1 is t, this is minus 2t, this is t. So t can be pulled out 1 minus 2, 1. Then you have to find the eigen uh, unit eigenvector. It's easy for us rather than using, I mean, dealing with these t's. How do you find the unit eigenvector? Okay. The magnitude of this vector can be found like this. Uh, x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared, no matter what the dimension is. You get the sum of the squares and get the square root. So one, the square of this is 1, 4, 1. 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 6. So the square root is 6. 1 no square root 6. This is a unit eigen vector. 1 no square root 6, 2 over square root 6, 1 no square root 6. Right, okay. Now you take that, that down. We use always the row iterative form to solve these, I mean, find eigenvectors. I'll do one more. I'll find the eigenvector corresponding to 3 as well. Then I write the eigenvector corresponding to 4 and do the problem. When you're ready, please let me know. Make run him in a eigen wave. Itchel for me can do. Vigil for me, crack up to the digger. First chapter, get crap. I crack equation solved. Can you make a game of gun of crap? Make a mugger of the name. Make a one kernel, make a palladin of cum zeros kernel. Then you go for the second row. Yes, yeah, minus two. Minus what I threw the underway. In the underway. Minus three is only for this one, huh? minus two. But really, it does not. Right. I think that's enough, right? Now, again, this how we, this is what we use to find the eigenvectors. Now, when lambda is 3, this one, substitute the values here. When lambda is 3, this is 0, 1, 0. When lambda is 3, this is 1, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. That's easy. Huh? You interchange these two. First, let's uh, form the augmented matrix. We have the coefficients, we have the right hand side again. You are good luck. Next, print current we have the in the line. Now you interchange these two. Why? Because you want to have one at the top. R1 and R2. So when I write this one at the top, you get 1 minus 1, 1. This one, 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0. Oh, now, it's easy. This one, it's already one. You don't have to worry. 
subtract and make it zero. R3 becomes R3 minus R2. Because we are going to use this element to make it zero. This one. So I'm not going to change both uh, R1 and R2. Now subtract 0 minus 0, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. 0 minus 0, 0, 0. Now this is the Venn diagonal. You have only two equations. This OK. X2 is 0. Look, this, this, this means what? 0 x1. X2 plus 0, X3 is, X3 is 0. So X2 is 0. That's easy. Now this one says X1 minus X2 plus X3 is 0. Now X2 is 0, so that's OK. Now you have one equation with two variables. Your rank is less than 3 here. Therefore, definitely, you have one equation less in your arsenal. Hmm? So, take x3, the furthermost variable, the last variable as t, then x1 becomes minus t. So, the eigenvector is uh, minus t, 0 t. You pull out t, 1, 0, sorry, minus 1, 0, 1. So the unit eigenvector forget about t, just take this vector and find the unit vector. Square to get the squares. One squared is one plus zero plus one. So one plus one is two, a square root of two. Divide everything by square root of two. Similarly, for lambda is 4, the eigenvector is this. You can find it like that. Right. Then let's have a summary. Hmm? Let's have a summary. Eigenvalues. One, three, four. Corresponding eigenvectors. Sorry, six. Those are the eigenvectors. Yeah. Then, what is our next part? Part three. Arrange those eigenvectors as columns to form a matrix P. Simple. We'll do it like that. Third part.
right? Now, if now, if you have p like this, uh, fourth six fourth part is uh, asked uh, uh, in the fourth part. We are asked to show that p is orthogonal. Orthogonal means what? Orthogonal means uh, those columns comprises orthonormal basis. Means what? P T P is I. You have to show that. P to, to if you want to show that something is orthogonal uh, under basis I, I explained this one. P T P should be equal to I. You have to show that. P T P is equal to I. So P transpose P. is P get the transpose You can work it out. You get this one. You complete this, huh? I. Therefore, P is orthogonal. Even though it is an orthonormal basis, as I told you, there's a slight abuse of language. It's called orthogonal. You complete this. Right. Now, last part. Last part. Show that P inverse AP is diagonal. Oh boy, we need to find P inverse. Hmm? Since it now, uh, it's like three hours now. Uh, and anyway, we will uh, take this one. Now we are at the culmination point now. But still, we are tired on the other hand. Therefore, uh, after finishing this one, I'll stop this. But after that, I'll connect everything tomorrow. Right? I'll connect all these things, in particular this last example, tomorrow. And then uh, from that, I can uh, do the diagonalization and uh, how this is affect, how can how we can use these things uh, to uh, change uh, the basis of transformation effectively and then quadratic forms. It's simple. I went through all the important stuff now. Right? Okay. Uh, last one. Fifth one. What is the fifth one? Show that P inverse AP is diagonal. Man, how can we do that? P 
P inverse AP. This is this. Ah, oh, this one. Anyway, P inverse AP is what? Now P is orthogonal, right? P is orthogonal means what? Since P in sorry, P transpose P is I. What can you say about P inverse? What is P inverse? P transpose times P is I. So P is multiplied by some matrix gives you I. So what can you say then? P in this P inverse. Because A A times B is I. A, A B is I means A is B inverse or B is A inverse. Here, the transpose of P is P inverse. Therefore, I can write P T here. Now you have to multiply and tell me the answer. Huh? This is three one zero one two one zero one three. This one no square root six minus two o square root six one no square root six minus one no square root two one no square root two. I I don't have no space there. Now you can find the transpose. I mean, you can take the transpose here. Now you multiply. Take two at a time. Take these two. Multiply, then multiply the result. It's easier because you know you can multiply it like this. Take this column and this one. Always in this column, you have square root six in the downstairs. So upstairs you get three minus two zero. Three minus two means one. Then when you multiply it by this one, square root six is in the downstairs. This row and this sorry this column and this row. So one minus four one. So it is minus two. Then you multiply it by this one, zero minus two, because only you have to multiply the upstairs, right? Downstairs is uh, only square root six, so minus two plus three, one. Mm, what's going on here? Let's take this one. When you take the second column, always you get square root two in the downstairs, right? You see, here you have square root two. So here minus three, zero, zero. So it's minus three. When you multiply it by this one, you have minus one, zero, one, zero. If you do that, minus one, zero, sorry, sorry, zero, zero, three. Then in the last one, you have square root three in the out downstairs all the time. So one times one times one, so it is four, four, four. Now, when you multiply these things, you get one sixth, four over six, one over six. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now, next time, when you multiply these two, you get zero, zero, zero. Here you have, uh, I write the answer three. You verify it, you get this one. You multiply it like this.
Look, there's a nice thing happens. Hmm? Now, I don't have the papers because I have written everything. Because I have used the, the second side door, so that's why I don't have them with me now. Now, look, once you do this, this whole work, you get a diagonal matrix. Diagonal means the main diagonal will have non zero elements. These are, in fact, the eigenvalues of A. Isn't it a nice coincidence? And also, the first column here was the eigenvector corresponding to 1. This one is the eigenvector corresponding to 3. This was the eigenvector corresponding to 4. But for example, if I interchange these two, I had to interchange these two, then you get 1, 4, 3. The, you get the eigenvalues here in the same mode. Then I'll discuss the usefulness of this problem next day. That means tomorrow. Hmm? But I'll give you homework. Uh, whether doing that homework or, uh, or not is not my problem. If you do it, you will, uh, you'll be in a better shape. Right? Okay. Uh, do the same problem. That we need a long problem, right? For this transformation. I give the answers. Hmm? Uh, there are five parts, right? Uh, first, you have to find the uh, matrix of linear transformation. It is this. Part two, you have to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Eigenvalues are two, four, five. I could have written it like this, huh? two, four, five. The eigenvectors are same eigenvectors we got. P, uh, you know how, how to, I mean, you have to just arrange these things in the, I mean, as columns. You can interchange these columns, it's okay, it doesn't matter. A fourth one, we don't have an answer, we have to show that P is, uh, you have to show that P transpose P is I. Fifth one, the diagonal form of the matrix is this. You get the, these eigenvalues in the diagonal. It's okay, this is something that I drew for uh, example. Do the same for this one. The two by two problem. So matrix of linear transformation is this. Eigenvalues. Uh, you get six and four. Mm -hmm. 
the risk you can you can you know how to find p and you get what it is you know so do these two two problems and tomorrow uh, i'll summarize the 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 problem and the usefulness of that and how you can uh, apply it in apply it in engineering applications and then how you use it in quadratic forms okay all right uh, these are the answers. Please do that huh? before tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, when uh, at my earliest convenience, I'll do, I'll do the test. Probably it might take only two hours. Hmm? Okay. Uh, So thank you very much, uh, and I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Hmm? So good night, everybody. Yeah.